Uh, you need like energy. You need like wow. an espresso okay. shot. <laughs> That's my me espresso. Okay, okay. sorry, I just had to say that. <laughs> We're revisiting prescribed fires. What are prescribed fires and why are they such a critical tool for the California wildfire strategy? Yeah, so prescribed fires are these like intentionally set low intensity burns that are used to consume the forest floor, right? To get yeah. rid, to remove the flammable vegetation, to clear it out, make way for firefighter safety and to reduce the risk of these really large uh, potential wildfires or mega fires in the future but sometimes they can go rogue. They aren't as common as they can seem to be those escaped burns. Right? Yes, that's right. And in fact, we have um, a new study that came out on escaped fires. Yeah, so I know that we have uh, Shu Li here uh, with us today. Uh, why don't we welcome her in? Oh, hi, Shu. Hi, Jamie. Welcome. Hi, oh my <laughs> God. Good to see you. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming. So we have my good friend, uh, Shu Li here, is a PhD candidate at UC Irvine in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering. And we actually used to work together back in the day. We were in the same lab. Ginny and I, we uh, did Christmas fires in 2022 together with the help of Professor uh, Rob York in the right. Forest. And uh, we just recently published a paper uh, that we co-authored uh, and she was the lead author on, on that paper on escape burns and so we figured we have to get her in here. It'd be interesting to know what inspired you to uh, take on this research. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, we're living in California, so It's we... a good starting point, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we experienced and witnessed the large wildfires by ourselves like almost every year. When I study the wildfires, I really would like to look at are there any effective tools to prevent the large wildfires in advance. So your study focuses on prescribed fires that escape control, like we've been mentioning. For those unfamiliar though, what does it mean when a prescribed burn, you know, escapes? How often does that actually happen to you? Prescribed fire has some risk to evolve to a large wildfire. That means uh, the fire department will need to invest more resources to control mm -hmm. that fires and it will also raise a public panic on it. Although the, the escaped prescribed fire is really rare, if we look at the number, the percentage of this escape events is just 0.16 percent, uh, according to the number released by the U.S. Forest Service. And Chu, is that 0.16? Is that for California or the whole United States? It's for the whole United States. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Mm. That's quite low. Yeah. Very, very low. <laughs> yeah, but although we have this very low number, but people can still see the news of the this escape fires. This will cause a very large and negative impact. It'd be interesting to know. Like, do you know of any specific examples or instances where a prescribed fire went beyond uh, its uh, control state? Yeah, actually in 2022, there were two escaped and evolved to a large wildfire in New Mexico. Okay. And um, that uh, spread to a thousand acres of wildfires. And this escape event also caused a pause on all the prescribed fire implementation in the U.S. for several months. The public perception is huge. So if they can have a good understanding that these are a very good resource, they're a good tool, but also understanding that there is a risk, but it's well controlled. I think that's an awesome uh, inspiration there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We tend to have prescribed burns in the fall season, but uh, this study shows that uh, these escapes are occurring more so in the spring. The most escape events will happen just in advance of the wildfire season or right after the wildfire season, which means in May, June or in September, November. In our previous paper, which you were a co-author on and I led, we talked about relative humidity being the limiting factor, the one that was influencing when burn windows are becoming smaller and smaller over time. Um, but in this study, you found that the winds are the ones that are controlling these big ex escape burns to happen. Based on our statistic analysis, wind speed really stands out among all these variables. So in practice, firefighters or people who cite the prescribed fires um, would find the wind speed or the wind direction change so fast that for them to take in-time actions to control the fires. There's different types of burn plants, right? There's like a backing fire where you're igniting the, the fires to move 
in the opposite direction of the wind. That's more of like a, a, a low intensity burn. But then there's also head fires where you're igniting the fire and the fire is spreading in the direction of the wind. And those okay. can be, you know, a, a little bit more scary at times. Yeah. They're, they're rapid moving, they're fast, and they can lead to more escape burns, right? So meteorology, super important in understanding those burn windows and when, yeah. or when escape fires can actually occur. Before you head out, Shu, what's one thing you hope people can take away or that you take away from your uh, research here? I do want people to know that don't be afraid of Christmas fires. It is really one of the most effective tool for uh, the wildfire management. Actually, fire is a natural process in the forest ecosystem. Uh, and at the end of the day, we would like to return the fire to the forests. I love awesome. that. Yeah, that was really well said. <laughs> Thanks so much, Shu. It's been a pleasure having you on our show. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, Thank care. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.